picture we hold the line. Well, thank you. I am so glad that we have such a strong core of constitutional conservatives in America. So glad the Tea Party movement has risen up to say, let's take our country back. So glad you understand that that is our roadmap, is the Constitution and fiscal responsibility. And you sent us 87 new freshmen in this last election to hold the line. And it's not the easiest thing to do when you look at all the maneuvering that's going on here in this Congress. It's impossible for anybody to go into this arena from the outside and see all of the moving parts that are there and analyze it and analyze the policy and figure out what goes forward and how to go there. Well, just I heard this morning in conference from one of the wise members that you would like a lot were he here, said that there are only two kinds of people that can predict the future. One of them those that don't know the future, and the other kind are those that don't know they don't know the future. <laughs> we know what's right in the past. We understand the pillars of American exceptionalism. We know what we've seen throughout the course of history. We know that in the Bill of Rights we can identify those pillars. Freedom of speech, religion, the press, freedom to assemble that we're doing here today. And let your voice echo the walls of this Capitol back behind me. Let your voice echo the walls of this Capitol behind me. That's what our founding fathers envisioned. They wanted you to be here today when they put that provision in the First Amendment. And they didn't want to see a nation in debt. They wanted us to pay our bills in our time. And they did, and they did so for the most part throughout all those years. Now you're seeing the national debt go up and up and up and up. And I saw a budget come through this Congress that balances it was the best thing we had to deal with, and I'm glad Paul Ryan brought it because it addresses entitlements. It was an important subject to raise as the entitlements. When you look at the bottom line, it balances in 26 years. Now, I have three grown sons in their early 30s. They've hardly worked in a time when there was a balanced federal budget. And they'll be knocking on the door of Social Security before even the Ryan budget balances. And now this proposal that's before us cuts out of next fiscal year $7 billion. The Ryan budget cuts $31 billion and balances in 26 years. We can't hold the line on the Ryan budget with this bill that's coming before the floor of the House today. And for me, that's a big deciding point. If we can't at least hold the line on a budget that balances in 26 years, when does it balance if we accept only $7 billion in cuts out of 2012. And never might come first. Somebody's got to tighten the belt of this country. Somebody's got to use the leverage that we have. And I would remind you that there's not a dime that this federal government can spend unless the House of, Re House of Representatives first agrees. All spending bills have to start in the House. All have to be affirmed by the House. So whatever Harry Reid thinks and whatever President Obama thinks, we either have to agree with that or they have to agree with us. Yeah. We can shut it down. We can hold the line. Yeah. Now, yeah. and one of those things that I put the marker down on hard and early is the repeal of Obamacare. Yeah. Every Republican came to this Congress on the pledge to repeal Obamacare, the pledge to defund Obamacare, and every Republican in the House and Senate and some Democrats have voted also to repeal Obamacare and to defund Obamacare. Now, if they put the repeal of Obamacare up and attach it to a reasonably small debt ceiling increase, I will tell you, I will salivate to vote for something like that. If they put a balanced budget amendment and attach it to a modest debt ceiling increase, I will salivate to vote something for something like that. I want a balanced budget. I want to repeal Obamacare. I want to send the balanced budget to the states. And even when that day comes that this Congress releases its iron grip on that balanced budget amendment, Bob Goodlatz, that's on the calendar of the House today, 
when the House of Representatives and the, and the Senate would finally release their grip on that and let it go to the states, what are we doing? We're asking three quarters of the states to ratify a balanced budget amendment to require us to do what we know we need to do anyway. So we don't have enough strong people in this Congress yet to get this job done. But we do have enough people, I think, to hold the line and stand strong today, tomorrow, this week, stare this president down, let's get a balanced budget amendment, let's repeal Obamacare, and let's be responsible and get to the point where our children and grandchildren are not going to be paying off the debt of our time. Thank you very much. Hold the line. God bless you.